Okay, what we have here is our RF32 32Q firing system. Now, this is a very well built, very well presented little system. Um, it comes in a hard plastic carry case here um, with custom foam inserts to keep all the equipment safe. So, obviously, you get your 32Q receiver, you get your handheld remote control, you get an American uh, battery charger, but we'll also supply you with an American to UK or an American to European adapter with the system. Um, of course you've got your antenna which you screw into the receiver. You get two metal arming keys and you also get a wire that's about a metre long with two crocodile clips on either end and you use this to connect an external 12 volt battery to the system if you want to use the external battery. Now the receiver itself also takes uh, 10 AA batteries secured into the back of it. So this is the receiver itself. As I mentioned before, it's very well built. Um, it's made almost entirely of folded steel construction that's been painted black. Um, the 10 AA batteries are secured beneath this metal plate in the base that's held in place with four screws. Um, it really is a very nicely built system. So if I turn it on by rotating the arming key, you can either select the external battery, which of course we don't have connected right now, or we can select the internal battery, and you'll see the system comes on and actually displays the voltage of the battery on the display there. Now, you can't remove the arming key when you selected the internal battery or the external battery, so basically when the system is switched on and armed, then you're not going to be able to remove the arming key. Now, this is for safety, because if you know you've got the key on you, then you know that the system cannot be armed. So the only time you can remove the key is when the system is in the off position. So again, if we just turn the system on, we put it into test mode, you can see all the LEDs light up next to each queue. As you connect igniters to the system and you have continuity in each queue, the red LED above the queue will go out, leaving only the green one on. So if we switch the system into fire mode, you can see the fire LED comes on. Then if I turn on the remote control, I first select the fire group, in this case fire group A, and then I press the Q numbers 1 through 8, and you can see I'm now manually firing Qs 1 through 8 on group A. Now there are 32 Qs, that's four groups of eight Qs, and each group is given a letter A, B, C and D, and it's clearly marked on the front panel. You can jump around between groups, but you have to select a group before you fire the queue in a different group. So for instance, if I select group B, and I want to fire queues 1, 3, 5, and 8, I can do that without a problem. But then if I want to fire queues from one of the other groups, I first have to select that group. So if I want to fire now Q8 from group D, I have to select D, and then 8. And if I want to go back to group B, I have to select B, and then whichever queue I want to fire. So for example I could press 1. So much like some of our other firing systems, you can actually securely program a remote control to a receiver. This is how they're paired up and it prevents interference. Something you can do though is you can program the same remote control to more than one receiver. This allows you to control uh, more than one receiver in parallel so you can actually trigger them at the same time. So just as an example here, I program the same remote control to these two receivers. If I now go ahead and select group A and then fire queues 1, 2, 3, 4, you can see that they are operating together. I'll then go and select group B and again fire queues 1, 2, 3, and 4. So you can see that you can control more than one receiver together. This is very useful if you have a wide firing front and you want to have effects going off simultaneously and you don't want the expense and the trouble of cabling them all together.